is my dream. Liberty sows its seed at Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Farms. Check it out. This is another lipo or lithium ion battery lithium lithium iron phosphate battery for the one or two of you that's like actually yeah no one actually cares just so you're aware of that but anyway this is a lithium battery and it is going to be added to the pile of batteries that i have in my off-grid solar system but the reason that i want to make a video on this is that there are so many other uses for the average radio guy the average prepper you know the average guy who wants to have power maybe when power turns off these things are great you don't have to have a whole house set up to have a need for something like this so let me go ahead i'll get it out of the box and we'll talk some more about some of the many other things that you can use with these that people just sometimes don't think of the price of these is coming down to the point where very shortly it will be just shy of what a traditional um, absorbed glass mat deep cell battery is there's a manual here as it says tear me off hi uh go cool. all right let me get that there's these little nuts and bolts here this is really well packed i gotta say so here we go all right so here it is and i'll go ahead while i'm talking here and cut this out of the pile so what can you do with something like this other than power your house or power the solar system how about your rv if you have an rv you probably have some sort of uh, deep cell setup already and if you do well those batteries usually need to be replaced quite often they're also heavy how do you like your fuel mileage <laughs> so uh when you replace an rv setup with something like this you're going to get double the reserve capacity for the same size battery and you're getting about half sometimes even a third of the weight of a lithium battery when compared to an AGM. I mean, this isn't this isn't a terribly heavy battery. This is, you know, I don't know, maybe 25 pounds where you're looking at 90 pounds, 85 pounds for a lead acid battery. Now, a lead acid battery, right? I tip it over and all the fluid starts to come out. So, there's a lot of applications where it just wouldn't be all that good. Oop, I lost my cap there. These can be mounted upside down, sideways, upright. It doesn't matter and it's really made it helpful for me because my little dog house that I built to house all my batteries is running out of space. So you can stack them, you can put them sideways, you can do whatever you need to do with them to make them work. Where else could you use it? Well, you could use it in a boat as a trolling motor and that's actually a great thing for these which I hadn't thought about until I got a boat. And so we're looking at outfitting our boat, getting ready for summer and I'm going to get a trolling motor and I was like, oh man, I gotta buy a battery. I was like, wait a minute, I could just take one out of the solar setup here and use it when I needed it. 100% capacity. So an average lead acid battery, your charge and discharge capacity is only 50%. So if it says 100 amp hours, lead acid battery, you really can't go much below 50% of its charge or 50 amp hours before you start to damage that battery. Run a battery down to zero a few times and you quickly find out you don't have a battery. If you've ever owned an automobile and had a draw problem, right, and the light was staying on, your radio wouldn't turn off, something like that, and you kept waking up and you had a dead battery, it wasn't more than a week or two of having dead batteries that you just couldn't put a charge back on that battery. It kills them. It's just the way it is. It causes a chemical reaction inside and sulfates the lead plates that are inside. So that's what's going on there. Well, you don't have a problem with this. You can run these down to 0% safely. So if I were going to go take a boat out with a trolling motor, and let's say with a big 90 pound lead acid battery, I was getting maybe an hour runtime. Well, now I have two hours of runtime and half the weight, which means that if I wanted to carry 90 pounds around, I could triple that and get three of these. And I would be able to go for hours and hours and hours, six hours on a trolling motor. That's pretty awesome. So these things will definitely do that. Of course, the main reason that I get them is for preparedness reasons, right? I'm not going to lie about that to you. I like the idea of going off grid. We have gone off grid um, about a third, a little bit more now. As the years go on, every, every year we add to it, this is going to get added to it. The more reserve capacity we have, and we're reaching that point, the more it becomes necessary for us now to go ahead and add more solar. So we'll, that'll be the next upgrade after this year's battery upgrades. But we have, uh, this will be four of these type batteries. And then we have a, a huge unit that we picked up, which is really the equivalent of four of these batteries. So we've doubled the size 
using these uh, setups here. And they're just easier because there's no compatibility issues. You can use one from Power Queen. You can use one from another company. It doesn't matter. Internally, they're the same. They have battery management system built in. So as you charge, they're making sure that each cell gets what it needs to have in there. Now, for you, if you wanted to, if you want to just have one of these, you could get a very simplistic, uh, here's a picture of one that uh, you know is a little charge controller and 100 watt solar panel. Harbor Freight sells them, eBay sells them. They're all over the place. Amazon sells them. It's PP, or, uh, MPPT is the higher end ones, but you can get the lower end ones that still do a good job of charging. You can have this sitting wherever. This also doesn't off gas, so I mean it can sit wherever. If I wanted to run these radios, well I could put it right here and safely operate right next to it forever. It's not going to create sulfuric acid uh, leaks onto my table and it's not going to give me a hydrogen cloud inside of my radio shack here where I click the button and blow the place up. That just, you know, these are not going to happen. So these things are inherently a lot safer than a lead acid battery if you're going to be using them indoors. But you could hook this up, have one single 100 watt panel outside, you get six to eight hours of sun at your house. This thing is going to maintain a beautiful charge to operate radio equipment like this. So really is a great little addition to anybody's radio shack. If you're into preparedness, this is probably the way to go. If you're still messing around with used car batteries or buying deep cell batteries from Walmart or whatnot, or golf cart batteries, it, it's time to say goodbye to those things. The price of these has come down enough that I just I can't picture myself purchasing another lead acid battery for the, that type of use. RV, boat, or off-grid applications. Now, would you want to put something like this into a car? No. No, you don't want to do that. It's not designed for uh, high draw, and, and it's just not designed for car use. It's, you know, a starter is going to be drawing many amps, like hundreds of amps uh, momentarily. They're not really designed for that kind of use. They're designed for a steady draw. So like 10 to 15 amps for an hour straight, like a, like a boat motor would have, something like that. So they're good for that. Now, can they be used? Yes, but like I said, you're, you're wasting your time with that. It's, there's no benefit other than maybe in a racing application where you wanted something lighter. But if you're going to do that, then just get yourself a jump box and fire up the car and drive it without a battery on board at all. So that, that just doesn't make any sense to use these for that. But there you go. It's not a terribly long video. I will go through and show you the, the equipment that it comes with. It just comes with a nice manual here and like a waterproof bag. So you can tell it's geared towards maybe RV use and uh, multiple languages. I better put my glasses on for this one. <laughs> So, uh, battery management system for 100 amps. 12.8 volts is the nominal voltage. It can charge all the way up to 14.4, which is what I have on it. You can put a draw on it of 1,280 watts, which is quite a bit. All right, it talks about connecting it. And it actually has charging methods when charging and discharging. Things to know as far as uh, recharge every three months. Interesting. Absorption rate, float phase, bulk rate. So like this is all stuff that I had to learn about when I moved into my solar uh, stuff, but it's great that it has a really nice English, not English, but English manual here for you. Solar panel recommendations, 300 hours at four and a half hours a day. We'll keep this thing topped off in one day. So there you go. It's really nice that they actually came up with that. Um, let's see kind of charger. If we're looking at a charger for uh, a charge controller is looking for a 20 amp or a 50 amp. If you're using a 50 amp, it can charge this in two hours to 97% capacity. 20 amps will do the same thing in five hours. So it's really nice that they have all this additional information for you here. And you can connect these in series up to 48 volts or in parallel. It tries, it says four, four in series, four in parallel is about where you're going to get uh, for these things. And that's kind of what I do. Actually, my systems are 24 volts. So I have 24 volt banks. This will be the second bank of 24 volt batteries because I'm going to slave this with another one. And then I've got two, two, and then the main system is also a 24 volt system. So that's pretty nice. So a total of 16 batteries is what it's saying if you want to go in series and in parallel. And it shows some of the different ways to do that. All right, so there's our series parallel. Really nice, man. Awesome. 
Well, I'm not going to get any more into it. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm a big supporter, a big fan of things like this, and there's good reason. I want everyone to be ready. If and when things go wrong, you should be prepared. I like to be prepared too. I'll leave a link to where you can get one, and I'll see you next time. Take care.